Okay, rezoning case Z55, Riverview Office LLC, request rezoning from OHR to RRC for the purpose of a mixed use development in land lot 1014 and 1015 of the 17th district. The property is located on the east side of Cobb Gallery Parkway, north of the intersection of Cobb Gallery Parkway and Cumberland Boulevard, and on the southwest side of Interstate uh, I-75. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z55? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Okay, Mr. Moore, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is John Moore, and I'm here representing the property owner and the applicant <coughs> with regard to this proposed rezoning case. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Greg Teague, our engineer, is here. Mr. Tad Leithhead, our owner's representative, is here. So if we have any questions, I can't answer them when I conclude, and I'm sure they will help us respond. <clears throat> this is a almost seven-acre um, track of land that's located adjacent to I-75 um, on one side, um, Cumberland Boulevard on the southerly side, and um, Galleria Parkway uh, on the westerly side. Um, this building, if you're going north on 75 um, as you cross the river, will be the first development on your left that you will see. It's almost directly across the street from the new Hyatt Hotel uh, Overton Park development. Um, so it will be a grand entry place, and this is what this is planned to be. And this <laughs> is um, intended to be um, a very, very nice development that will be a gateway to Cobb and, and very well done. Uh, this is being done um, not as a spec office mixed use residential, but <clears throat> Mr. John Williams and his companies that he's involved with will be plan to occupy at least half the space that's planned for this office building. Um, and they've already received some inquiries about the balance of it. So I think that uh, this is certainly not a spec. And we haven't seen a a project proposed uh, in Cobb County, um, certainly over the last seven or eight years of this magnitude, um, and it's good to see something like this happening. I'm going to sh point out some things on the site plan for you, if I could. This is I-75 here, Cumberland Boulevard is here, and then Galleria Parkway is here. This is um, <coughs> Gallery of 75 office complex here. Um, and the Performing Arts Center, of course, will be up um, north of this. Uh, this is the site. This is the office building, which will be at the point uh, of the triangle, pretty much, uh, facing uh, towards 75. This is what you will see. Uh, behind that is the uh, parking deck. And then the residential is around the parking deck. Um, the residential will shield the parking deck from view from basically all sides plus the office building itself. Um, there will be uh, two levels of parking also below the office building and the plaza, um, and then a five-story uh, parking deck here. These residential units are um, six, a maximum six stories in height, which will cover the parking deck um, all the way around. We also have additional uh, 14 uh, townhomes located along Galleria Parkway. In the intent, as Mr. Williams is known for, is to heavily landscape this entire area all along both sides uh, to make this the most attractive uh, in appearance uh, and capability. Um, there'll be a total of a maximum of 250 units, 236 of the stacked flats, and uh, 14 um, townhomes, a maximum of three stories in height. Um, and then you have the office building which has a maximum of 200,000 square feet, a maximum of 10 stories. Um, we have a small amount of retail uh, in the proposal, up to 5,000 square feet, and that will be not restaurant use, but it will be um, user uh, uses for the residents that, that are there. It'll be a coffee shop slash small uh, convenience store type place and a dr dry cleaner pickup. Um, so. People can, that live here and work here can use, utilize both of those uh, without having to go out anywhere to do that. 
Um, these residential um, uses are um, done in the condominium form, and uh, I'm going to sh show first. Uh, we're going to put the elevations up as we go, um, as well. The, the um, first thing you're going to see are what the the stacked unit condo units are going to look like, uh, and you can see that they'll be. Uh, very urban in, in appearance, um, but very well landscaped as well. And um, those will be what shield the parking deck. So as you drive by this place on 75 or um, Galleria Parkway, you won't see any parking decks, which is um, a very good thing. <clears throat> as I was saying, the residential units, both the townhomes and the, the stacked flats are prepared um, to be um, fitted as condominium units. They'll be built to condominium standards. You see in our stipulation letter dated August 29, all the upgrades that are being done to these units. Um, and they will be leased until um, the, the market conditions change, primarily the financing conditions change. And this will be determined by the primary lender, which is a third party different than um, the developer uh, itself. Um, those will be then converted to for sale condominiums uh, should that uh, ever be determined. And the problem currently with condominiums, especially in, in the, the number you see here, is it, the, the current financing rule to the ultimate user, 51% of those have to be sold before they can finance the first one. So you can't get a, a, a ground base of units uh, sold because there's no way to finance until you have sold 51%. Hopefully that's going to change in the near future. Uh, I understand why they did that during the recession we had, but it certainly uh, has in, uh, impaired doing any projects that have any size to them. Um, the stacked units will have an average of 1,040 square feet to them. The uh, townhomes will have a minimum of 2,000 square feet and up uh, for those. The Parking uh, for this, we have shown on the plan 885 spaces. Um, it is planned to be a, a shared parking with the office complex. Um, Cobb County and the staff uh, have experienced this in the past in several developments. The one right across the street at Overton Park is a very good example of that. We have shared parking there between the hotel and the office building. And we'll have it between the residential and the office here. The idea being that when the demand is great for one, the demand for the others is light. For example, during the day, the office demand is great. Residential is not. At night, it's, it's vice versa. In other words, the residential demand is at night, and the office would have no demand at, uh, during at night. Um, we would, during the plan review process, the staff would study the, our uh, proposed shared parking arrangement, and we can provide to them a ULI study on the shared parking if they uh, deem that appropriate during the plan review process, which um, we have done in the past. Um, on the Cobb DOT recommendations, they have submitted revised recommendations, which we agree with, um, and uh, with one exception. They have re requested we provide desail lanes at both entrances. Um, as I indicated when I spoke earlier, we intend to heavily landscape along Galleria Parkway. And of course, putting a desail lane will greatly affect the amount of landscaping. And there are no desail lanes as you proceed north on Galleria Parkway. There are none at Galleria 75. There's not even any at um, the Performing Arts Center. So we're happy to um, have you recommend that um, we work with, with the DOT during the plan review process to address that issue. But we think the uh, additional landscaping that we're planning along there would be much more beneficial. We don't anticipate any problem with entry and exit here. In other words, there's not going to be a stacking of people trying to get in. There'll be in the morning with people coming in the office building, be free flow into the parking uh, deck. Um, and um, so there should be no backup of traffic trying to get in uh, and out of there during the major time frames, a.m. or p.m. Um, The minor modifications language that we've talked about is in our stipulation letter at page 4, paragraph 14. I did not have, when I started this, the new language. We're 
perfectly agreeable to have the new language substituted uh, in our um, stipulation letter for that paragraph uh, 14 on page 4 uh, to be the, the current language. This has been recommended by your professional staff for approval. Um, I might note that the prior zoning in 1996 on this that zoned it office high rise had 399,000 square feet in a 19 story building. Um, so this is actually a reduction in height of building and um, in, in square footage of, of the office building. Uh, your professional staff, as I said, has recommended that this be um, approved as meeting all the requirements of the land use plan and other uh, zoning requirements. And we would ask that since uh, we had no opposition that this be um, considered for the consent agenda as well. And we're glad to answer any questions. Well, look at that. He finished right on time. Don't you love it when an attorney <laughs> finishes right on time? <laughs> Thank you, John, That's very right. much. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is in District 2, so I'll lead the discussion on this particular one. Why don't you stay up? I'm sure we're going to have a few questions for yes, you. Sir. Um, is, is John, uh, yeah, okay. Um, we did see that there was no opposition, but let me ask just to be sure someone didn't come in. Any opposition to Z55 or anyone wishing to make a comment to Z55? Okay, not seeing any. We'll close that portion of the hearing. Um, as John mentioned as he closed his presentation, this was originally zoned for a high-rise office complex, 19 stories. I believe it was actually even more square footage uh, was approved than what John mentioned. So coming down to a 10-story building is, I think, a good thing for this site. Uh, 250 residential units, uh, making it a good mixed use with some small 5,000 square feet of retail space, I think is a good use of this site. I like what the plan looks like. I think it will fit this site quite well. And, and uh, the best thing about this, when I was talking to Mr. Moore about this last week, um, is that Mr. Williams desires to build this and move in as quickly as possible. Now, we've had some other zonings in this area, the Cumberland Galleria area, quite large projects that never took off, and the land is still sitting there. This is going to be the exception, we think. Uh, Mr. Uh, John Williams says that he intends to build this quickly and to move in because he needs to do that. So we're excited to have that happen. The three areas, Mr. Moore, that, that you and I have discussed that I think bears a little bit more discussion, the variances uh, that may be required here, parking requirements, which you and I have spoken about extensively, and, of course, the DOT requirements that you mentioned as well. Uh, just to get it on the record, what variances are going to be required as you have it presented today? What are the variances? I'm sure there's some setback issues. There are some setback issues um, because of, of the, the large amounts of setbacks that are required adjacent to these major thoroughfares that we have. But since this is urban in character, the whole idea is to bring this um, to up to the street level and then landscape that so that it looks very attractive. But there's no need for setbacks because you're not adjacent to anything except basically three roads and another office complex. So, um, and we meet the setbacks in the rear, but so it, we don't really have a problem with that. Um, the other one would be parking that I discussed earlier uh, at 885 spaces. Um, we don't have what code required parking is, um, but we're not that far away from what it is. And I think with the shared parking, um, there's been a move over the last 12, 15 years to try to reduce the amount of parking if you don't need it. Um, and um, we certainly um, think that with the shared parking, we're going to have more than ample uh, parking for the, for the site, for uh, residential. The townhomes will have its own parking. Uh, then you have uh, the condominiums that will have the parking in the deck shared with the office building. So um, people in the townhomes will not have to walk from the deck to their homes. They'll have their own. Um, and I think that's why we are asking for a, a minor reduction in, in the amount of total parking that is code required because of the shared parking concept, which the staff has recognized through ULI studies that have been done on shared parking. This certainly office and residential use um, are in the category that allows shared parking. Um, you want to discuss that any further or you need to move on? Um, on the parking requirements, I've had a number of discussions with some of our members here and, and other people as well, staff members, about the parking issue. Several people have tried to calculate. On a big project like this, as you said, it's very difficult to come up with an exact number of what would be required. 
I think it's probably slightly more than a thousand would be required based on uh, the square footage that I see and the number of units that I see, perhaps a thousand twenty five, a thousand fifty. So you're at eight eighty five is what you're proposing now. Uh, however, the the retail space, since we know it will not likely be a restaurant, we we really don't need twenty five or thirty spaces that's being allowed for that under the code. Probably need five or six spots for employees. Um, most of the people who shop there, if it's a coffee shop or a dry cleaners, are going to walk there because they live and work there. So we're going to pick up a few extra spaces there. So maybe we're up to 900 or 920, something like that. We're really close to 1,000, which is what I would like to see us get. So I'm going to recommend that at plan review, we try really hard, and you come with some good ideas at plan review to show us how we can get closer to 1,000. I think we'll all feel a lot more comfortable with that. I know the shared parking concept. I know that it does work in many instances, but I also know that occasionally that's a real problem, especially early morning, late afternoon when you have people leaving for work and people coming to work or people leaving their home and then coming home in the afternoon. That, those two time frames, parking can become a real issue, but if we were closer to 1,000 parking spots, I don't think that would become as big an issue, and we are planning for the future. I really would like to see that happen if we can. So I'm going to recommend it. Plan review. We shoot for that, try really hard for that. As far as the variances go, I understand the nice landscaping that John Williams does. He does some beautiful stuff, and we all agree with that. Um, how much setback do we actually have on the two major streets, Cobb Gallery, Parkway, and the Cumberland Boulevard? How much area do we have there that you intend to landscape? And how much of that would you lose if we require the DOT uh, desail lanes. How wide is the landscaping going to be now? Um, if you look, this is shown to be a concrete sidewalk where I've got my finger running right here. And then behind that, uh, you have um, 10 feet of actual dedicated landscape plus uh, up <coughs> next to the buildings as well. And then all the way along uh, the townhomes, the same thing. So you've got um, a minimum 10 feet and then a little bit more. If you took added in a, a desail lane, you would take that away. Um, so that's the reason we were saying that. So you would lose that landscaping? Yes, sir. Entirely. No, well, way, to, that, no that, way to reshift buildings in order to maintain some or retain some landscaping? No, sir. You see that site is um, full <laughs> of buildings. It's hard. It would be hard to do. I'm saying we can work with DOT and see what we can do. Um, if, if there may be some alternatives that, that can be discussed, whether we really need them or whether it was just a standard request, mm -hmm. um, since we don't have them anywhere else up Gallery or Parkway. But um, I, I think that's another thing we have to discuss at plan review as to whether we really need them or can show our landscape plan and show how it will certainly make the enhance the site to have that as much as we can get. Why don't we get Ms. Strickland, would you want to come up and let's address that very quickly? Give us your name. Good morning. I'm Jane Strickland with Cobb DOT. Okay. Tell us what you have recommended regarding the desail lane. We have recommended desail lanes at, at both um, access points. At both access points. Mm -hmm. And how wide would that desail lane have to be? It'd be a 12-foot lane. So we minimum. would indeed lose that extra 10 feet that they intend to plant right now. Yes, they said their planting area was only 10 feet, so it would even go further into their site. Okay. And is, yeah, yeah. can you put it on the, on the uh, plan? Can you point that out for us, where the desail lanes would be? At, at both? There are two entrances, one that's a sort of a service entrance. So desails at both. That's what we would prefer, yes. Okay, and that's a standard practice for you, especially for a project of this size. Exactly, yes, sir. Okay, well, um, I hear John, and I understand the, the attractive landscaping. I'm inclined to agree that we probably need the desail lane. This is a really busy area. I know that there aren't any desail lanes to speak of in this general area, but I have been out there and ridden around, and there are plenty of desail lanes within a short distance of there. There's actually one at that big AT&T building, which is right across the way there, they have a desail lane. So there are some in the area, and of course, on the other side of Cobb Parkway, uh, there are quite a few 
uh, large buildings there that have desail lanes, and this is a very active, busy um, traffic flow area. So desail lanes probably would be a smart thing to do from a uh, standpoint of, of safety and so forth. Uh, I'm just wondering, any other thoughts from John um, <coughs> Bob? Excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Could could you take the mic and the pointer and bring me from Interstate 75 in? Either I'm coming down 75 from Ackworth or I'm coming up 75 from Atlanta and take me to the parking deck. Show me where all the turns are, how I would get there from Interstate 75. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm interested in is that the desal lane, well, whether it's a desal lane or not, but that we don't stack up this exit off 75. Well, here's the ramp for 75. And you would make right on Cumberland Boulevard. You'd make a right on Cobb Galleria Parkway. I believe you access the parking deck from from this main that's right uh, full access point so that's your main flow point right there yes sir. and then how far is that from there down to the corner with uh with, Riverwood Parkway? with cumberland boulevard yeah no the other way oh this distance yeah because that's where i'm thinking they'd stack up um, mr moore do you know the answer to that the distance from that main entry to the corner come on back up one inch equals 50 feet is the scale that's right here yeah so 500 feet i know it meets our criteria so you probably don't need all that for desal lane that's a lot of cars right well we're not asking for a desal lane all along the whole front okay, well, that's why i'm asking you to be a little more specific about where would your desal lane go um it would probably be right in here in this area okay so we we could have the landscaping most of the way you, you're, you're talking about a desal lane for 10 cars or something like that? Uh, probably not even that many. Uh, probably about three cars. Yeah, that's a smaller kettle of fish. Yeah, Four that cars. that really puts a different flavor on it. Okay. It'd be kind of right in here. And then with the taper. Okay. So perhaps, and I don't want to put words into your mouth, perhaps 100 feet of the 500 feet. Yes. So 20% rather than, that That does put a whole different flavor on it. At the other entrance, you're asking for a desail lane as well? We, we were, because it looked like it was serving the residential side of the site, so that's why we were asking for it. Also. Okay. Okay, John, come on back up if you don't mind. It, that second, the one closest to the north, the second one, what does that drive for? Is that a, uh, that, that services cars that are going to the, uh, the townhomes? The 14 yes. townhomes, as well as that those um, stacked flats that are there, correct? Yeah, we're talking about service more more a service entrance than anything else. It's, it's a service entrance. It will serve these obviously, but it'll serve back here as well. Um, so, so if I was going to eliminate a desail lane, that would be the one to eliminate. Yes, sir. And that's why we recommended that you recommend that we finalize this in, in plan okay. review. Uh, with the desail lanes because I'm not sure we need both and a hundred feet is not their standard desail lane now the standard is 150 so we're already talking about changing it and we're certainly willing to work with them to make sure we have a a, a safe um, traffic flow kind of plan do you agree that it's about a, about 500 feet from that main entrance down to the corner yes sir that's what okay so even at 150 says. feet you still have ample room for some landscaping well, for some, but she was saying, I'm sorry, Miss Strickland was saying that, um, you know, maybe may willing to shorten it to 100 feet, which would make a 50 foot difference. And, and this would be could be huge as far as land. I think that would have to be decided at plan review. I don't think Jane's prepared to tell us that we'll definitely go to 100 feet. No, but I think said. that's I think it may be doable. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's why it's good to leave this to, to, to that if we could. OK. Um, rather, than, if you require it, then we have to bring it back in other business to change it. So. Even though we might work it out with DOT during plan review, if it's required uh, as part of your motion, um, then we have to bring it back um, to other business to the board to have them change it. Yeah, so. I got another point too. Uh, one of the commissioners, come on back up, Jane. One of the commissioners suggested that very point that we do let this go to plan review for final decision, but that we use the county's DOT chief engineer to be the arbiter here for that. Uh, Jane, you, you weighed in on that as well. Uh, Mr. Hobie, did you want to make another comment before Jane comes back? Yeah, we, we love the work the Williams companies do, do to make their places look good. We, we know it's going to be good, and we don't want to lose any of that quality. 
but this is really a technical thing. We want to make sure that the, nobody's out there blocking the flow of traffic, particularly coming off of an interstate. So I see this as a technical decision. We need, we need the, the least that we're technically capable of supporting. And Jane, you had another comment? I did. I, we have not received the traffic study yet, so um, I'd, I'd like to see that before we define the length of the diesel lane. You think you'll have that um, soon? Okay, so we'll have that in a day or two. Great. Yes. Okay. 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 Judy? I think all the questions that we have been good questions and good answers, but the whole thing should be decided at the plan review process. Right. Once you have the DOT study and once you have determined that everything can flow without a stack up, then I've never seen Williams put a building down there that didn't have huge amounts of landscaping. So um, I think it should be left up to the plan review, subject to the final plan review. Okay, Mr. Hobie has one additional. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Dan McDuff's our chief engineer. He's the top technical manager in our DOT department, and I guess I'd I'd be happy with the stipulation that he he makes the decision at or after plan review. Yeah, that that would be my suggestion as well. And I was alluding to that earlier. We can just ask Dan to attend the plan review session, assuming everything goes through after today in the BOC meeting, um, and then we can resolve that issue at that point. But I like the idea of shortening the desail lane, eliminating it possibly at the other entrance, but leaving it at the main entrance. And I think given what Bob pointed out, which is a great point, it's a great distance from the exit all the way down to that main entrance around the corner. Stacking there probably would not occur uh, to any great degree. Holding eight cars, ten cars in a diesel lane would probably be adequate, I would think. I would hope so. Okay, any other comments or questions? Christy? Oh. Okay. I'd just like to make a few comments on the parking because that did concern me. Uh, I noticed on the plan that it was calculated at 1066 parking spaces required without any sharing. Uh, that the numbers used there were slightly different than the county ordinance. When I recalculated that, I got 1168. A uh, few comments I have is those are really minimum numbers, and they're maybe a little out of date given office environments are changing and that it's going to a paperless office, so you don't have all this space for filing cabinets and things like that. You're also getting more of a collaborative workspace. So they're getting more people into the offices that way, which is amounting to more people per square foot. So it's becoming more common to see like a five to seven uh, spaces per thousand square foot instead of the county standard, which essentially makes it three and a half spaces per thousand square foot. So. You know, potentially there could be a need for 15 to 1900 cars here with that kind of thing. Also, the uh, residential units are much larger than I think an average uh, size residential unit. Uh, so the numbers used to contemplate spaces for that may also be a little bit light. So, you know, and the other thing is once you establish the parking here and build it, there's no place on the site to add more parking, you know? So if you get it wrong, it's gonna be a problem forever on this site. So you don't wanna do that. So that's, you know, why I think it's important that we not try and cut back to the bare minimum. I certainly understand the concept of, you know, shared parking and, and it makes a lot of sense. But as uh, Mr. Terry said, there's that period of time, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m where you're gonna have a clash of both uses. Uh, so maybe midday, there'll be a lot of parking spots, but you don't wanna get there. So I would also support at least a minimum of a thousand spaces and you know, say that if you need to add another layer on the parking deck to reach that, that would probably make sense. Uh, and those would be my comments relative to parking. Ms. Trombetti, do you have something? I do. Um, I had some comments and really questions, I guess, not so much for DOT or parking, but with regard to the residential component. And um, I don't know if you were planning to get there later, but that was the only thing I wanted to ask about. Mr. Moore, if you could come. Um, 
And I thought of this when we started talking about landscaping. Regardless of how nice the, the landscaping will be, there's just not much room for it. And then it made me think of how to mitigate for traffic uh, or for noise related to traffic for the people who eventually live here. Um, is there a construction standard that is used in situations like this? And maybe you don't have the answer, one of your... No, I think but, we do. We have, they try to soundproof the ones that are closest to the interstate, for example, because that's where the noise comes from. Right. Obviously, they have to do that um, in order to get people to be interested in living there because that would be a... You don't have enough room here to do um, a 100-foot buffer, you know, from the highway. So what you have to do is to soundproof the units, um, certainly the ones that are on that side of the complex. The others probably are, are, are fine the way they are, or soundproof them all. But they do go through soundproofing uh, between units and on the, uh, to, um, on the exterior for those. Okay. Because they built a lot in downtown Atlanta with the same kind of problems. Right. And I know some of the streets in town that are different because this is more highway oriented, right. not as much busy in town traffic. I think we've seen Speeds that in the West the Village higher. along 285. Mm -hmm. All those units mm -hmm. are soundproof and they fill right on up. So I, well, they do, and I, I'm familiar with that, and that's another thing that made me think of this because yeah. it's still, I mean, I've been inside some of the units at West Village, and it, you can still hear the, the cars, and it can be a deterrent. And my point in being concerned about that is if these will ever be for sale and attractive, for people who are looking to invest and, and purchase, mm -hmm. that's that's a big concern. And I think the landscaping is as well. I would rather see a little bit taller buildings and more room for, for plantings around the perimeter. I like the concept a lot, but I'm not crazy about the site plan as far as um, you know taking up what looks like almost every available piece of, of green and, and and reserving just 10 feet around for a strip of landscaping. Well, that's just my input on the site plan itself. And I don't know if that's another plan review issue. And I'm, if six stories sure how, is a, is six stories a, a, is there a reason for limiting the residential to that no, height? I think it, uh, well, I think two, the, the two limiting factors are when you do the parking deck, you've got to build a parking deck sufficiently uh, that it can flow. So it's got to be big enough structure to do that. I'm talking about width and depth. Right. And then if it's five feet, excuse me, five feet, five stories high, then the, the units were planned to be a story above that to hide the, the parking deck. So I, I think the driving force when you get behind the, the office building is the size the parking deck has to be to be five stories high um, and have the traffic flow inside of it, you know, without being too narrow. But is there a reason that the residential units couldn't be seven stories or eight, so that they're taller and leave more room I know, on the I, ground? I understand, but I think you're still space-wise going to be in the same place okay. because your parking deck is not going to change. Okay. And then the townhomes. I mean, they're all lined up right against the road. I don't. You know, again, I, I like the concept a lot. I'm just making these points because the idea of these one day being for sale, right. that's a big, probably going to take a long time to begin with. And then secondly, once they've become rental and they're established rental and they're right here against all these roadways, I'm not sure. Well, I think, number one, these are going to be three-story, very nice looking. And that was one reason is that it will be a, a pleasing aesthetic as you drive along uh, Galleria Parkway and the landscaping adjacent to them. When um, Mr. Williams did post Riverside, uh, they had the same kind of concept there. Uh, and then what they got were requests for townhouse units. So they had to go back and add those in. Uh, they're not that many, but people really like, uh, that like to live in an urban deal. Some of them do like the townhouse uh, concept. That is bigger units and three bedroom, uh, you know, between two and 3,000 square feet. So that's why they're put there. Okay. Um, I'm not sure going higher would reduce the footprint enough to make any appreciable difference, in, especially in soundproofing. If you went to seven or eight or even 10 stories, yes, it does reduce a little bit of the footprint, right. but not, not very much, frankly. But I think that's something we can also look at as we tweak this plan going through, because uh, we haven't got to the engineered stage yet. It's just a site plan. 
So I think during the plan review process, that certainly could be a consideration. I think more green space would make it a more attractive residential environment. Yeah, that's a very good so. point. That is a good point. Thank you. Go on. I have another comment I totally forgot about. Maybe you can address this. You may not be prepared today, but maybe for the Board of Commissioners is, you know, when you, when we're talking about shared parking, I know commercial tenants especially love to get X number of spaces reserved for them. And then you end up with a problem of you are counting on getting all this sharing and you're not really getting the sharing. So I would like to see a cap on the number of <clears throat> reserved spaces so that we know that they're really going to have spaces available for sharing. I know there's always going to be some reserved. And, and by reserved, I'm not talking about reserved for visitor parking where any kind of visitor could use that uh, because that's shared parking at that point. But actually reserved for tenants for the executive parking or reserved for the residential tenants if they're going to have an assigned spot or something, then that doesn't really become a shared parking. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, any other comments or questions? John, you have anything else or kind of beat that dog to death, didn't we? Yes, sir. No. Okay. I want everybody to remember how excited we are about the project, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. I think it is a good project for that site. Um, we'll go ahead and move to a motion then um, without any further comments. Uh, my motion for Z55 would be to approve Z55 for the RRC zoning, subject to staff comments and recommendations, uh, subject to the STIP letter dated August 29th, 2013, and the revised site plan uh, done August 28th, 2013. But I do have some alterations and adjustments to the STIP letter. Uh, let me see if I can get to that. Um, one comment, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I noticed in the steps that we mentioned um, deliveries allowed on Saturday and Sunday, and I questioned Mr. Moore about that, but when you think about the number of residential units that are here, people will be moving in and out. That's typically done on a weekend, and so I, I think we need to leave that in, that deliveries can or should be allowed on Saturday and Sunday, primarily for that one purpose, so that's fine. Um, I want to delete Stipulation number 14 in its entirety, which has to do with the minor modifications. Mr. Moore mentioned that. And I think because we are just beginning to use this new minor modification limitations, I'm going to go ahead and read this into the record. Our intention, though, going forward is not to have to read this lengthy thing every single time. We'll simply refer to this as the standard minor modification limitations from August 26, and we'll be inserting that in many of the zonings that we hear. But for this particular purpose, delete 14 and put in its place the following. The district commissioner may approve minor modifications except for those that increase the density of a residential project or the overall square footage of a non-residential project. Number two, that cause a reduction in the size of an approved buffer adjacent to a property that is zoned the same or is more restrictive in its designated zoning. Number three, uh, that caused the relocation of a structure closer to the property line of an adjacent property that is zoned the same or that is more restrictive in its designated zoning. Number four, that increases the height of a building that is adjacent to a property that is zoned the same or is in a more restrictive uh, designated zoning or changes an access location to a different roadway. So those are the exceptions to minor modifications. In other words, the commissioner can, can approve minor mods except for these items related to density, square footage, uh, buffers, relocation of a structure, building height, or changing an access. So that would become number 14. In the future, we probably won't read all of that into the record. On the um, step number 21, which is a list of prohibited uses. I like those very much. I would like to change just a little bit. Number C, these are listed A, B, C, D. Number C mentions automotive sales and repair. I'd also like to add or leasing or service facilities. Also, number D mentions gas stations. Um, I would like to add to that full service or self-service gas stations. And then when we do that, we can delete number K which is redundant, so we can do that just for point of clarity. 
Um, let's see. On the parking, number 23, I'm going to recommend that we change that to read, there shall be a minimum of 1,000 on-site parking spaces. But I'm also going to add the issue of parking spaces, especially related to shared parking, will be fully explored and explained to the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, and any remaining problems will be fully addressed uh, at plan review. And so we'll let that stand, and you can make the adjustments at plan review as, uh, as you see fit. And then number 24, which is a new one in that section, I want to add that the DOT issues of desail de lanes and interparcel access. We did not talk about interparcel access. DOT recommended interparcel access with the property next door, which I believe is called Galleria 75. I don't know that there's a need for that, but I'm going to let, let that be handled at plan review. Uh, both parties, the people who own uh, Galleria 75 and Mr. Williams have agreed that they're willing to do that, but no one understands why that's necessary. So I'm going to leave that in and just say number 24, the DOT issues of desail lanes and interparcel access will be resolved at plan review with our DOT chief engineer, happens to be Dan McDuff. I'm not sure we need to put his name in there, but let's just say DOT chief, um, chief engineer acting as the mediator and his decisions will be final. So that will take care of that. Let's see. I believe with all the discussion we've had, I think that will cover it. Any other comments? Or I think that covers it. That would be my motion. Do we have a second to that motion? I'll second it. We have a second from Mr. Porter. Any further discussion, comments, questions? Not seeing any, we'll go ahead and call for the vote on Z55. All in favor of the motion? So that passes 5-0, Madam Clerk. Thank you so much. John, we have a little work to do, but I think it's all doable. We're excited to see that very large project. If it passes BOC, let's uh, break some ground. We'd like to see that. Thank you very much.